Hi, I'm Stan with Fender, and Josh Smith and I are gonna go through the reflecting pool delay and reverb pedal today. The reflecting pool is super comprehensive. There's a delay side, there's a reverb side, they can work independently or together. It's a true stereo pedal, it's got a tap tempo foot switch, there's a jack for an external tap. Each side has a lot of different sounds on it, so let's get into it. Feature-wise, on the delay side, like the mirror image, this delay actually has two delays under the hood. In the case of the mirror image, it's preset to a dotted eighth against whatever the quarter note value is. But in this case, it can be a dotted eighth, a triplet, or an eighth note against your quarter note. So walking around the panel here, there's a knob for the level of the delay. There's a knob that sets the balance between the main delay and the sub delay. There's a feedback control, and there's a delay time control. And you'll notice a little clockwork around the delay time control. And what that's for is with the tap tempo. If you hold the tap switch down and set that to a note value, that's the value that you'll get from tapping at a quarter note. So if you set it to dotted eighth, you'll tap quarters, the delay will give you back a perfect dotted eighth. Underneath that are the controls for the modulation section. So there's a rate and a depth control. The rate does something really cool where if it's all the way in the fully counterclockwise or off position, it actually turns into a random, which is really, really fun for subtle modulation. Next, there's a switch that establishes the type of delay. This can do three different types. There's a digital delay model that's super, super clean and studio-like. There's an analog delay model and there's a tape delay. Then there's a switch that establishes the timing for the secondary delay. So at the bottom, it's a dotted eighth. In the middle, it's a triplet. On the top, it's an eighth note. Lastly, there's a quality switch, and the quality works with the individual delay models. So it's labeled one, two, and three, and basically in the first position, it's the fidelity is as high as it can be, and as you start going towards two and then into three, you lose some bandwidth on each end, and it gets a little noisier and funkier and just kind of vibier. There's a tap tempo foot switch and the bypass foot switch. All right, let's go through the sounds. Let's start on the delay side, but first, Josh, what are you playing? Uh, today I've got a Ventera 60s Stratocaster and uh, we're playing through a 68 custom deluxe reverb. What's it sound like? All right, here's straight into the amp. And what we'll do is we'll walk through the three different delay models, and as Josh is playing, I'll flip the quality switch so you can hear what that sounds like. So we're starting with the digital delay. This is the closest thing we have to like a straight up studio delay, kind of perfect bandwidth, no noise, just exactly what you put in. Here's the second quality position. So it's subtle, but you hear a little softening of the top end when that happens. Let's go to the analog delay models. Nice. So there the difference is much more pronounced. Very much. All right, let's go look in the tape. All right, let's poke at the modulation a little bit. We'll go back to the digital model and uh, start off with a just normal slow modulation. It adds kind of a subtle coursing to the delay. and then the random part of it. All right, let's look at the sub delays. So right now, we're set up for a dotted eighth against Josh's quarter note. But I can switch it to a triplet.
or a straight eighth. Let's look at the tap tempo function. Right now, I'm gonna hold the tap button down and I'm gonna turn this to quarter notes. And go to a single delay and I'm just gonna tap a quarter in. Three, four, one, three, okay? It's the same tempo. If I hold the tap switch down and then turn this over and set it to where it's a dotted eighth, tap in the same, comes back as a dotted eighth. On the reverb side, there are several different reverb options available. So there are halls available. Halls are super dense and thick and they're great for single note soloing, really inspiring, kind of sustained playing. There's a room mode and the rooms are much more sparse and they're better for like staccato rhythm playing where you maybe don't want the reverb to be too much in the way. There's a switch labeled one, two, and three for each of those. And what those do is set the size of those reverbs. So they go from very small to very large. And then there's a special category. And the special reverbs available are there's a shimmer, that adds kind of octavey harmonics as you play. There's a really fun gated function where you can control the shape of the decay. So you can make it decay smoothly, or you can make it more like a gate, or you can actually make it like an inverse reverb, and we'll check some of that out and listen to it. Because we always do this on reverbs that we love, there's a great modulated space that's really good for chord swells. For controls on the reverb, there's a knob for the level. So that's kind of the mix between dry and fully reverb signal. There's a knob over here that controls the reverb decay time, so how long it sticks around after you play. There's a damping control, and what damping generally does, it changes depending on the modes a little bit, but what it generally does is it makes the reverb kind of get softer and quieter and darker as it decays over time. Then there's this extra control, and the extra control does different things depending on the mode. So for example, if it's a hall or a room, this damping control sets the high frequency decay this actually sets the low frequency decay. So you can have the low end of the reverb go away first and preserve all the crisp highs. In the case of the shimmer, the extra knob adjusts how much of the shimmer, like how quickly and how many of the octave harmonics it adds. In the case of the gated reverb, it sets the shape of the envelope. In the case of the modulated reverb, it sets how deep the modulation is or how wide the chorusing is. Right now we're set to the hall reverb and we'll set to the second hall reverbs, which is the medium size. I'm not gonna change the decay time, I'm just gonna set it to the smaller setting. And the larger setting. Beyond decay, that changes a bunch of things about the reverb algorithm, the liveness of the room. All right, let's go listen to the room settings then. Here's the short, small room. Here's the medium room. Here's the large room. All right, let's go check out the specials. The first special is Shimmer. Shimmer adds beautiful octave overtones to what you're playing. This extra knob adjusts how much of the octaves are thrown in. Okay, next up is the gated mode. And we're gonna start with the more natural decay setting. I can also set the control more in the middle where it's a little bit square, it cuts off a little more abruptly at the end. And then if you keep going that same direction, it actually inverts and gets reversed sounding. And you can set really long decay times and it'll have a really long swell. Almost like flipping the tape over. The last of the special modes is a beautiful modulated reverb that's great for rolling chords into. The 
extra knob controls the amount of detuning that goes on. So when it's over on the left, it's very close to being in tune. When it's on the right, it adds this kind of a subtle, gentle chorusing to it. And there you have it, the Fender Reflecting Pool Delay and Reverb Pedal. True stereo, true bypass, awesome sound quality, great flexibility, a lot of delay sounds, a lot of reverb sounds, straightforward and easy to use. For more information on the Reflecting Pool, as well as the full line of Fender pedals, get to Fender.com and stay tuned for more videos. Josh, you want to play us out? Absolutely. <laughs>